Hello and welcome to Alex Lyons Presents, where this week on the show I have Jay from Tesseract with me. Hello, how's it going? I'm not too bad, thanks. Um, by the way, if you do think this sounds a bit echoey, we are in one of the toilets here at Coco. So if you can hear dripping from the sink or James quickly going to the toilet... Badunk. That's why. <laughs> But uh, you're currently on tour with Carnival. Um, what does this tour mean to you, and what venues have you been to, and are you going to after this tour at Coco? Um, this tour means to me uh, a lot. It's been probably the funnest UK tour I've been on, um, mainly because the crowds have been fantastic. They've been big crowds. Um, they've been nice big shows. They've been a lot of fun. Carnival are some of the nicest guys you'll meet. You know, straight away. We had this instant sort of. We shared a sense of humour, so it's easy to get along with. Yeah. Um, and they're a killer band, you know. What if you come into Coco tonight? Watch them; they're unbelievably good. Um, we. This is the, the last show of the tour. Uh, Coco in Camden. Never played here before. Nice and big. So I'm looking yeah. forward to it a lot. Um, we've been up to Glasgow. We've been to Birmingham. We've been to Sheffield, Nottingham, Manchester, Bristol, and Portsmouth. I think I just did that in reverse order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my brain's a bit uh, messed up at this stage because yeah. we've done a lot of touring. So. But uh, are you surprised to say that you're playing at Coco? Because it's more of a, not really a metal kind of venue to be playing yeah. here. It's a bit different. Um, to be honest, we don't consider ourselves a metal band. Like, yeah, which sure enough will be in the HMV metal section because <laughs> we, you get pigeonholed as generally what you are. But, yeah. you know, I, it's not that heavy anymore. Yeah. So, and Carnival Long particularly heavy you know so yeah it's, it's fine you know it's, it's a nice venue it's not grotty at all like most metal venues are it's kind yeah. of nice to play somewhere a little bit different and in terms of the HMV metal section I think they throw anything in there anyway <laughs> it's like my yeah. chemical yeah that's metal just it's metal there. there's a guitar and someone vaguely screaming so it's metal <laughs> yes um, also this year you released your second album which is called Alter State mm. um, as an album what does this album mean to you uh, as a band and as an uh, individually and what has been the fan reaction um, for us it was kind of a second start because we we released the, uh, the first album and then lost the singer um, just a bad luck and bad timing so immediately we had a, a pretty much worthless album other than in the eyes of the internet and a few fans um, Altered State was like I said it was a fresh start it's enabled us to go back to touring the world again you know been out to the States uh, been to Russia Belarus um, like some amazing places we're about to go to India to, tomorrow actually we're going to India uh, we've just been to this uh, to Canada and Mexico and you know it's it's enabled us to do all of this again um which I don't think a lot of bands get the chance to, you know, you mess up big time, which you could consider losing your singer a month after the album drops. Yeah. Being a pretty major blow. Um, we've been given the chance to do it again. Um, it's a challenging album. Uh, we had very little time to write it, um, which I suppose every band would say on the second album. You've got your whole life to write your first album and then about a month to write your second album yeah. with all of the touring. But it came together very quick. Um, we got Ash on board, the new singer. He wrote, sorry, he wrote it all pretty much um, in a couple of months. You know, it was probably less than that. Um, it was a very different process because we didn't have the luxury of going into big studios, so it was a home recording. But with technology these days, you can't necessarily tell that unless you're a, you know, a music nerd. Yeah, um, a, a connoisseur of music. Exactly, unless you've got speakers that are as big as your house and <laughs> as expensive as your house, you may not be able to tell the difference. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's been received amazingly well. Um, we've you know people are singing along to it live, which is fantastic because it's only been out you know half a year or so. So yeah. it's um, yeah, we're, we're very pleased. We're playing to a lot more people than we had thought possible. Just because of the how well the album's been doing. Or? Yeah, I mean we we've outsold the first album like considerably just in the states alone. So it seems to have been. It's been accepted more widely than the first album, and I'd probably put that down to the singing on it. Like Ash's voice is more um, accessible than a lot of the screaming on the first album. Yeah. So we've kind of ditched screaming, at least for now we have, because um, it just singing lends itself way more to the songs. You know, there's there's the chance to write amazing melodies over the stuff that Ackles come up with. Um, instead of just screaming over it which could you know, it's kind of one dimensional kind yeah. of ruin a good song by going <laughs> so, 
Yeah. Maybe you could just do that on the album. So just yeah, like that. You just there'll be like twenty minutes of silence at the la- end of the last track, and then we'll all go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're just coming to the end of 2013. Mm-hmm. What has Tesseract been up to this year? Um, 2013, let me think. Uh, we've we've been touring quite a bit. The, the start of the year was quiet because it was the lead up to the album, so we didn't tour that much because we didn't have anything to promote. Yeah. Uh, we were just rehearsing a lot, getting ready to take this stuff live. Um, we've been out with Periphery uh, around Europe, which was a lot of fun. That was early in the year. I'm jealous. Um, I'm yeah, they're good guys. They're really good guys. Um, we've done... Uh, we had, we, no, we haven't headlined what we've done. We've done uh, Tusker in Finland, which is a, a really cool festival. Um, we have released a second album, of course. Uh, we, yeah, it's just been a load of touring and preparing. We've, we're preparing for um, a live DVD as well that's okay. going to take a, it's a long time in the making, to be honest. We're trying to do every part of Altered State, so the four parts of it. We're trying to do in four different studios around the world, piece it all together and put out a live DVD. Yeah. Um, so that's started. Um, we've done the first three tracks and we've got to do the rest of the album. Which we're still learning. So. <laughs> it's a good thing they're not filming this interview because it would look yep. a bit weird. It would look a little, a little bit weird. I'm very close to the toilet, and <laughs> I have to say I can smell it a little bit, which is a little worrying because it's not very late in the day. And I haven't used it yet. And he hasn't used it. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> but what does 2014 have in store for um, you guys? Apart from the DVD, that's so much touring. Um, we're starting out in January and February, literally right at the start of the year, the fourth of January. I think we start uh, around Europe with Protest the Hero which is going to be great. Uh, good buddies of ours that we've toured with in the States before. Uh, we're then going to Australia to do Soundwave Festival, which is about three weeks of amazing festivals with touring bands. You, got, you get your own plane and stuff like that, so that's going to be great. Um, then I think there's tentative plans to go back to America, although there's no... Um, nothing is penned yet. Yeah. But that's the idea. That'll be springtime. Um, then hopefully we'll hit all the summer festivals... Um, I don't know about any new material in 2014 but you'll certainly see us on the road a lot cool so just kind of more touring a lot of touring next year, <laughs> ne- next year I-, I know that I've got two months off the rest of the time is touring so ten months of touring you say you're tired now just wait until the end of next year yeah well, hopefully I'll be buff next year so, yeah. <laughs> we're all hoping for that don't we <laughs> you're calling me fat <laughs> And uh, what would you say has been the craziest moment on stage that you guys have experienced? Craziest moment on stage? Um, well, to be honest, we don't have many crazy moments because we're all about trying to create atmosphere. You know, okay? people occasionally get up and jump off, and people in costumes get up and do stupid things. But <laughs> we've not had anything too crazy. We have had a crazy day though. Um, which I was talking to you about before. We were oh, in yeah, Mexico, in, in Monterrey, and um, we had uh, a chaperone in Mexico who was this chap that was really high up in government, and he took us around in helicopters and all kinds of things. So that was like, <laughs> you know, pretty rock and roll. Well, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think we've got a helicopter being driven around by the head of police of Monterrey. Yeah, it's, it's you know, this kind of thing that you, you just don't ever think is going to happen, especially when you haven't had any, like, Pre-warning: We just yeah. had a rock up the top of this car park. There's a helicopter there. You're like, come on, guys! We're like, what? Are we in danger? What's going on? <laughs> bundled into this helicopter and taken to the top of a mountain. It's like, cool. I'll do that again. Yeah, yeah. I, I might come with you next time. That sounds cool. Fair play. Yeah. And if you could have any superpower, which one would you have, and why? Um, this has changed as I've gone as I've got older. Because <laughs> when I was a kid, and I'd, I'd be playing like Street Fighter and stuff like that, I wanted to be able to like control electricity and fireball and stuff like that then I wanted to be able to control fire because that would be really cool now I'd want to be able to fly why fly? because okay commuting would be so easy because you'd just be like like sub this I'm just going to take off and you go straight up <laughs> get to where you want and like flying would just be so majestic like you could like imagine if you're a photographer and you can fly you can go to the top of mountains like that you yeah. can you know take amazing pictures of clouds I don't know I'd just like to be able to fly but in terms of you say you know in terms of traffic you can just take off how would you do the take off would you just be like a jetpack start or no, a no, running no. start it'd be a David Blaine levitate you'd literally <laughs> just like you'd be standing you'd be like nah balls to this and you'd just stand up and float directly up at the speed of your choosing maybe do a superman you put your fist on the floor and like the ground slows down a bit and then you take off and the ground's all messed up <laughs> yeah but then you'd have to paint back 
the, wherever, in the, wherever you are, like, on that camera. Unless you never went back there, and then it was somewhere far away. True. They'd never find, well, they probably wouldn't find you with satellites, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would track down. And uh, No, I like the idea of the running start. You know, you just flap your arms just, and just take off. You yeah. might, like, take a few people out in the process. Maybe. I'm a bit clumsy. I think a running start would probably end up with me losing teeth, so. Yeah, same here, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but, Jay, a massive thank you for taking the time out and allowing me to good. interview you despite where we are. Um, good luck with uh, the gig tonight and with the tour over in India as well. Thank you.